Happy Monday morning, Calvary. I'm Pastor Pete, and I have your word for the day. So today's psalm is Psalm 51. But before we jump into Psalm 51, I want to give you a little bit of the story that's in the background. It's probably a story that you're familiar with. Um, you can find it in 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. And it is the story of David's sin with Bathsheba. You know, David uh, went in an area he should not go, and he, see this, he sees this beautiful woman who is um, bathing on her rooftop, and he decides that he's going to have an affair with her. And so he has an affair with this woman named Bathsheba, and it turns out that she becomes pregnant from that affair. So David makes a plan to cover this up, and he gets her husband, who is Uriah, to come back and hoping that they will sleep together and then they can just think the child is Uriah's. But that plan of David's doesn't work. In fact, the plan fails so spectacularly that David decides that what he has to do is actually have Uriah killed in the midst of a battle. So he orders his commanders to put Uriah in the front line and then to withdraw so Uriah is left uh, to fight the enemy alone, and Uriah does die in that battle. So David had this whole elaborate scheme in order to cover up his sin. And once Uriah died, he brought Bathsheba in to be his wife. Well, a little bit later, his sin was found out. And the prophet Nathan came to David and told him a parable. And through the course of that parable, Nathan was able to show David his sin. Uh, not just the sin of the affair with a married woman, but also the sin of murdering the wife's husband to cover it up. David, of course, is crushed because his sin was found out and because he realizes the gravity of his sin. And it's in the midst of that sorrow over sin that David writes the words of Psalm 51. And what I want to do is just read a few of these verses to you so you can hear David's heart. Verse 1 says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. He goes on and he says, For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. You know, David comes to God just begging for mercy, begging for forgiveness. This psalm goes on to ask to, to David describing that forgiveness as being washed whiter than snow. So David is very much impressed by his guilt and the wrong that he has done and he wants that wrong to be washed as white as snow. And then he says this. He says something that for us sometimes gives us a little bit of a struggle. He says, against you alone have I sinned. And when we're reading this, we're like, I don't understand that. You know, D David had an affair. Then he had somebody killed. Why is it against only God that he can say he sinned? And really, it is any sin that we commit against a fellow human. It is against God. Ultimately, with every sin, whether we have gossiped about somebody, whether we have um, hated somebody, whether we have attacked somebody, all of those sins ultimately are against God. All sin is ultimately against God. And that is the one who we have mostly offended with any sin that we commit. So David begs for forgiveness throughout all of Psalm 51. I want to encourage you to read it. And then in verse 15, he says this. He says, O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. So when we come out of sin, when we turn around and we ask for God's forgiveness, the outcome is that our lips will be dedicated to the praise of God. Right? David doesn't want to continue on this path of rebellion. Instead, he wants to become a person of praise. And so you see that in verse uh, 15. And then finally, in verse 17, he says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. So if you're looking over your past week, or maybe you're looking over your life, 
and you feel the weight of your sin. You feel the grief of the things you've done against others and the things you've done against God. He's not asking you to sacrifice. He's not asking you to do anything other than to share that broken heart with him, to confess, to be contrite, and he will forgive you and he'll open up your mouths to sing. I hope today has been a blessing. Have a great day, Calvary.